So now we've got a uh, one of my favorite uh, references to work from this beautiful, elegant back photo shot. This illustrates, I think, really nicely the curvature of the spine uh, that we're dealing with. Now her head is tilted a little bit forward now, so the spine, uh, the, the cervical part won't go right up. But if you, if you look at the curvature, we've got this beautiful movement, right? We've got the th thoracic uh, movement here, right? And then you've got the lumbar just beautifully coming this way. And then the, I mean, yeah, the thoracic lumbar here, and then the sacral coccygeal coming back that way. Isn't that really beautiful? graceful kind of you know kind of just natural human human uh, pose so let's work on now uh, her features a little bit so I've got you know part of it laid in you can see that so we'll kind of start to tighten things up a little bit so we'll work on her chin I'll just bring out the chin a little bit here underneath coming through here and then we'll go to the the jaw here up underneath the mandible part and the nose would be about right. It's going to bring out that nose just a little. Pop out the nose a little bit and shaft the nose, the button part of the nose, and maybe just a touch of that top lip, and that'll be enough in through there. And then we'll shade this down, this digastric part of her jaw in through there. So working through now, I'll come over and start to analyze the anatomy. So we're at the, the neck here, so we can see right off the trapezius makes a nice uh, beginning here and she's also a little twisted uh, in terms of her her neck, not her personality, right? She's not twisted, we don't think so. Uh, sternocleidomastoid part of the neck right in through here coming over and back down towards the sternum and the clavicle. Okay, we have that. And we're coming on here and we can start to see C7. Can you see it right about there? that cervical, last part of the cervical vertebrae, right in through here. So we see it there, making its announcement. Now we start to see, if you think of the top of this whole shoulder girdle as, a, as now, I think of this as a box. I had a cylinder over here on this study. Now I think of it more as the top of the box over here. And it changes my conception of forms, change as I move through a different pose or drawing. So I start to see that you can see that very lightly as the top now of a box in through here coming on down. So let's feel this out a little bit further. Let's bring down the gesture of her spine one more time in through here and let's find some rib cage parts. So we're moving down in through here. We see this fold of the back of the lat a little bit, the lower part of the spot, the scapulas up here a little bit. We get this fold right in through here, which gives us more of a rib cage feeling about right in here in 10, right in this area. So I'm going to mark that a little bit. And this will come back up further. Uh, now we're coming over here, and I might have her a little bit broad. We'll put 10 about right in through there, coming up through this way. <clears throat> and then we'll come over and she's going to be higher here and this is where she really dives in so 10 over here is probably right and through there she's brought up to the side right in through right in through here <clears throat> moving over and then she gets uh, broader in through here so we can start to see now we have this rib cage put on here in the back and we see these ribs coming down this way. We'll see the ribs coming down this way, flowing this way a little bit further as we move through here. So we come down, we feel that spine coming through here and we get a nice strong rut canal coming through. And we see some of the spine, and see those little bumps in there? Those look little dark little fingerprints almost. Those are the spinous processes and this, this, the points, the cartilage points in between them that show us the, the spine of the, of the, um, the uh, lumbar, getting into the lumbar region. Now we have some clear uh, anatomical marks to make, don't we? Here to indicate the dimples of where the sacrum meet the iliac crests here. You see this beautiful dimple here, right? And this moves over buttock moves over to here 
and through it, kind of like we did the, we saw at the top up here, didn't we? So we see that this bean form of the glute, beautiful, coming down through here. And then we see over here the bottom of the sacrum. We talked about that earlier in the other views through here and around. So we see where that, that uh, this tilt of the pelvis starts to get taken. See how it's on a curve there? Right in through here, this is what's making the shadow. We're down here, this is at the top. So we just see this as shadow down at the bottom as we're coming around. And we're in two point perspective here. See how she's moving to the side over here. That's important to see too as well. So we're not straight across. So be careful you don't draw it like that. Now we're coming across here, we're gonna feel this other dimple right in through here. And it's kind of like a donut hole shape here and here. It's, it's pooching in and making a pock mark. And this brings us around and through here. And it's also, you can tell where the sacrospinalis, the longalis, well, excuse me, longissimus and the iliocostalis <clears throat> start to make a major play in through here. There we go. And over now, we can start to indicate that a little bit. So we're just indicating for now as we're putting everything together. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to feel the sacrum here coming over, and you can feel the triangular, boxy triangular part of that sacrum through here now as we're working it through. And this we get this now part of the crest of the pelvis here, right? Get that part coming over, sheathing and coming down even further here. And this one starts to move over. We open up here and around. Put this on a little bit more value. This glue pulls over, like so, grabs around and pulls. All these glutes are pulling over here and around, just finding a rhythm and up and over, attaching to the trochanter on the other side. We come back over here now, what we see is we see this turning over, the sacrospinalis, the iliocostalis, and longissimus over here. And we see a little bit now of the lat over here in the oblique. And they come together. This wants to turn in like so and overlap, and then back behind it, we have more of the pelvic iliac crest and through this region coming over and cascading downwards. And so we see some of this material now coming on top and around. And we're coming through now with the glute and the buttock region back over, really rounded, beautiful shape to it. Through here, and yeah, we get this split right, right there. There we go. Okay, and through, and we'll put on a little bit of just the leg, just a touch of it back, going back over, topping out here, and coming down. <clears throat> and foreshortening there. And then we start to get this rounded point of her buttock, glutes, and all that can go back in shadow for now. So we feel that. And then we have this. I think I'll, I'll uh, leave this for now. We'll come back to it on more of a finished part of it. This is turning it through. This is glutes turning. Now I'm working on the shadow. All right, so we're still hitting our anatomical features. Now, <clears throat> let's go back at the top and start to really get a hold of these uh, shoulders. So we're coming through the neck now. We know that we're trapezius land here. So we have the trapezius muscle coming over and ending right in through here, remember, and sitting on top of that scapula over in through the acromion process, up and then over. We can already see it and coming coming down and through and then moving to towards the center of that back 
about right in through here. So that would give us the shape right up and over here, right up the scapula and overlapping the scapula, right? A little bit on the acromion process, then through over here, all the way connecting it. You can see it right in ending here. And as we get, you can see a little bit of the clavicle coming up and that's attaching over on it through. It's a little bit thinner here. And then twisting over right here in her neck. Do you see that right in through here, bulging out a little bit there and then finishing, finishing out. So this gets more bulky for her right in through there. We have a little bit of shadow to play off of in through there. <clears throat> then we can split this as the spine of the, of the thoracic part of the back comes through. So we're coming up all the way to roughly C7. I'll mark that again through here. So we're getting that split and it's pretty obvious we need to now get the get the scapula on there. So we have the scapula, remember that's bice it's coming over the, the top part of the acromion of the scapula in through here, then around. Okay, that's turning in through here. And then right where it ends here, you start to get that fold here of the skin right in through there. That's not the scapula, but that's starting to be an influence that was influenced by that. But the, the tip of that ending is here, and we come back up. There's the, the beginning of the acromion process. That gets us all the way up and over to here, right in through here. Okay, you can see where that acromion process is making its way through and up and coming over and getting to the clavicular part, clavicle part, very fancy way, clavicular, fancy words I'm using, right in through there. <clears throat> so we'll separate that a little bit, this little hump, right in through. And so what happens is, is we get, if I get the right tool in through here, we get now the deltoid coming out of the shoulder muscle in through here, coming over, sheathing over a little bit, in through here and downward. Okay, we see that. Then we're going to get into a little lat later on. But what's happening is that deltoid is coming over here like so. Coming around and over, right? And what we get a little bit of the tubercle of the humerus. Do you see it right here? So here's the ball right there, roughly. And we get a little bit of that side shading on that. The light source is top left. I think I flipped this one, flipped this photo around just so I could place it better on the page to make it a little bit better design. Uh, so we have that, right? So there's the rest of the scapula. We'll come over and I'll go ahead and draw it. Even though it's not showing up as much, but that's okay. We'll just draw it anyway. We have that trapezius laying over on top of it, and we get we get some of that shadow toning right in through, or the trapezius right in through there. Now we can see that from the scapula here, we get a nice shadow form and a little bit of divot in here from the shadow, right, of the trapezius scapular region. And then the back behind it, we get shadow in through, in through here as well. And coming around, that spine needs to be a little moved, a little moved over. It can still, still move a lot of that over, right in through there. And it can go a little darker now. Divot of that, of that spine coming through. Uh, and then she's coming in deeper over and really gets pushed in the what I call kind of this little rut because it's it's deep it's but it's but it's uh, not very wide so it's narrow it's kind of a narrow rut and then we'll get this shadow of the of the scapula coming down and through here <clears throat> so we have that now I'm going to uh, take the arm off a little bit we'll put the humerus bone coming down like so here curved a little bit, and then we're going to find this almond radius quality 
much like that. This would probably stick out. This would be seen as much more like more like that. More to the side through here. Get that little tubercle and the little side slat here working through. <clears throat> So coming on over, now as we're removing the arm a little bit, we'd see this rib cage further, right? So this rib cage at 10 coming over, and you might see this moving over and get a little bit more of the lats starting to emerge. So that lat's going to come underneath, right, and then attach over here. And so we know that it's also going to sheath over. Remember, it catches over the top, right, a little bit of that scapula. So you know where to put it as you're practicing your anatomy. Trapezius could go a little lower. We always want to be uh, mindful of being able to move these when we need to. So, true. so the canal of the spine rut in through here and a little bit even more dynamic in through here. And get these processes. They're like little darker dots for now. Because what's really happening is they're, they have a tube of the longissimus of the erector spinae or sacrospinalis. And it's tubing right over this way and through. All right, and it comes all the way down to that dimple, which is attaching across the scapulae, right? Across here, so we're dimpling down and through. <clears throat> and around. You can see I'll make some contour lines, change direction. It's really moving in, in that way. Okay. So <clears throat> let's uh let's continue here. So we've got that rib. I want to get the rest of the oblique now here over, comes in a little bit, and then starts to, with subcutaneous fat, starts to get a little bit richer and softer. And right there, there's a little, you see that little hub of where that bone is? Look up further inside and that's where her butt comes in. Through here, we might see a little bit of a divot for the trochanter, just a little bit. Great trochanter area where her butt is, or uh, glute is, sorry. <clears throat> so we're moving down. We've got the lat now over here. So let's come over to now the other side of our drawing, our dichromatic drawing and through here. Keep going. And we can see now that the trapezius ended here earlier than when I had it. That's the acromion process coming around for the, the clavicle and it really bulges out with a roughly meet here. We can see that right in through there. And the deltoid wants to come down, it's going to get a contour line of that coming through and over to the arm and downward here to the elbow. <clears throat> now coming across, this is the lat through, we're moving to the latissimus dorsi and through here wider, right? <clears throat> and then beginning to hug onto that rib cage. We don't see a well-developed serratus interior that would come out. It would be in this direction. We don't see that, so we'll leave it, leave it off. Hugging that rib cage to about the tenth here, and then bulging inward since she doesn't have a, she's a pretty fit model. Right it through. And this will overlap and generally want to reflect now the sacrospinalis, the erector spinae, and the, the iliocostalis, and the um, longissimus, and through here. Right through there, you can see where these overturn and come on over and in. So they really get some stress along the line where she, she bends a little bit and that goes right in. You can see where they attach, where that dimple is. That's where it's telling you right there where they attach and this becomes shadow here for the oblique. There we go around. And a 
little core shadow, of course, right in through there so we get a little bit stronger <clears throat> shadow in the buttock and through there. Okay, so I can I can strengthen up some of these shadows where there's stress points here. here. There we go. So we pull that in. Let's come over to the other side, get that dimple now here over a little bit higher. <clears throat> I'm going to adjust now and bigger. <clears throat> so it really gives us this plug. This is turning into the ilio, iliatic, iliac crest in through here. And it wants to curve, 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 and come over. And it starts to then define the boundary between the sacral spinalis muscles right in through here. Okay. And where the oblique would be, roughly right in through here, coming down. A little bit of space there, it's a little bit wider out. We get that coming through. There we go. <clears throat> so now we want to get that more of a corded feeling on this side a little bit further, right in through here. So a lot of times just, just for academic type type of drawing. I'll um, put down a tone and then I'll come back with a little little contouring line in these spaces the best I can to make their make their contouring approach feel a little bit more uh, clearer. Trapezius here, trapezius. Let's keep on going with the lat now. Those are lats coming over right through. Be right here, and then we could use our scapula as help to figure it out. So the scapula is really processed up in through here. You can see way over now. And this we're coming around through here. Right in through here. So the trapezius just nicks it over. I had that, I had that right. Don't be afraid to adjust when you need to. This will go in shadow. We'll pull all that back in shadow for now. <clears throat> and so there's the scapula, the, the uh, beginning of the left side moving over to the acromion process and moves all the way over to here, right, and downward, and then it's going to be moving this direction. Remember it's a triangle, so about ending about right here, so the lat would be just on top of it, and we get a much more side view that, and then it, right here it's going to turn over and meet up. And of course the deltoid is over the top of that too as well. So that trapezius is right connected right in through there nicely. And so that would mean this would be turning over this way. That's important to get that little contour. This kind of overlaps. C7. They split apart a little bit through here. This position is a little wide, but I'm okay with it. I could bring this over shadow just a little bit to help me out. There we go. Through here. Now we have the lat now in proper position. It's going to come over the scapula. And through here and come over and connect around the uh, the tubercle up underneath and around it. All right, you see that? And it's bulging a little little light source here. A little light hitting that that ridge. That means this is all cast shadow back through here. Then it falls away pretty quickly. 
like so. <clears throat> We're getting there. Not too much longer on this one. <clears throat> so now we can come up with these cords over here of the sort of stalks, if you will, the sacrospinalis in through here. So first thing I'll just put this back in a shadow here. A little bit more, okay. And then we can bring them out. Remember, they're just cylinders, so we're turning them, right? And they're starting to turn this way, turn this way, and then they turn this way, okay? Like so. With this being the apex, or the cylinder top, uh, uh, the, the greater, not top, but the greater side. And so that's where they'll get a little bit more of the shading in through here. We can see some little divot points. It's also a core shadow. Right through there. So well they'll come out and she's really bending right in through. Right in through there. You can see that. <clears throat> so that's a strong overlap right in through here where this turns and this turns up a little bit where they come together at the rib cage at the tenth rib and this will come actually in through here and then over there we go <clears throat> sacrospinalis will overlap because it has to attach remember to the tubercle not the tubercle but the uh, the iliac crest sorry for sometimes I I had, you had to think so hard you for, forget your terminology a little bit. Okay, so we have a little bit of this finishing out uh, here where the sacrospinalis, the longissimus part of it is. Now we come into the spine area and the we see a little bit in through here the spinous process it could be emerging in here. It's kind of a little triangular spear or reed like the um, reed of papyrus or something. It sounds a little weird, but uh, like a leaf. So it's here a little bit. And these get really now bony. And through here. So this is like the deepest part of the rut, right in through here. And what you notice next to it is some lighter area. And this gets a little softer as it ends out, and this is all turning over. It's turning, turning. Well, we can overturn it here now. And those are these corded areas. It's a really strong area right in through here where we're getting a change in direction. And this gets a little darker and deeper right in through here. Okay, so we have that. <clears throat> Running through here, the trapezius is being influenced by the rhomboid and also the sacrospinalis, the longissimus, through here. Just could gently, just gently come back over to the spine like so. And underneath here, so we're getting there pretty close. We get a little bit of turning and folding in the lat and through. Take off the cast shadow there. Okay. <clears throat> In the sacrum now, the underneath part where it gets shaded and toned in through here because it's moving downward from the pelvis right in through here, we'll push where the two forms come together, so to be careful, really look at this. This glutes here. Students make a mistake here, they don't keep on going. You wanna keep on going with this bean form. This overlaps, this turns here. Like so, so it comes across. See how I can move my hatching this direction and then come over here and this would come over this direction and 
move it over a little bit, shadow. You can see there. And then we can start to form these out a little bit. You can see these start to form further. And then we have <clears throat> cast shadow in here. We have the end of the form of the glue, the buttock, the left buttock curving down. We'll put some darker marks. These are cast shadows here where they split for good, where she's on the, the stool there. In through here, sitting down. This is a cast shadow and a cross. And then the form shadow is here on her buttock, right through there. And I can contour that a little bit darker to show you that, right through there. And then this is a cast shadow. So right in through here, that's a deep, dark cast shadow. And then you see this little hard edge coming across it. That's like one egg being cast on another in terms of a cast shadow right in through here. So this is cast shadow, a little bit harder, a little bit harder edge, especially where it gets the darkest. That's where the split, the deepest split of the buttock is right in through there. And there's now we're on the base of the sacrum down below, sort of almost coccygeal region. And through here now we're coming around, finishing this up, turning, 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 turning. There we go. So we've got that nice bulge and turn of the uh, sacrospinalis. And we can finish this, this part of the buttock out through here. So cast shadow. A little bit stronger and through here. <clears throat> and then it starts to fade a little bit. Gets in over here. I can go both directions to make the light appear on it a little bit a little bit stronger. And then this isn't cast shadow here. So this is a harder edge here. And then cast shadow and all that. All that shadow there. <clears throat> she gets a little gravity squeezed on there as well. We have that. We're getting pretty close now. Now I can come in here. I'll use a little red and force a little bit of this oblique out right here against the the um, sacrospinalis or the iliocostalis ribcage coming up and it gets lost in through there. Add a little bit more through. We're just about there now. Maybe just a little, a few little stronger shadows here on the side of the glute. Here, that's where the highlight will be there. Roughly, and maybe a little bit stronger as we turn where the glute turns and attaches to the sacrum. Let's get turned over a little through here. Just a touch darker. And the sacrum ends about right here where the lumbar vertebra, vertebrae are. Right in through. Right in through there. So this whole thing is a little cylinder turning and then it gets into that rut like a little canal like a canyon, and then it comes right out of it pretty quickly. That's why you get a little bit of shadow on this side, and then it gets light, doesn't it, because the light source. That will always kind of be the case, depending on your light, quite a bit. It's pretty powerful that way. Bring out the scapula a little bit further. Okay. All right, I think we've got what I need there, let's put a little bit of light and we'll get out of it. We'll get to our very last, last study.
if you go through this, this entire anatomy series, you can't help but, but get better, no doubt. So some light running through here off the spinalis part, of the lower part of the back here, the longissimus, just to catching a little bit of that light. Not as hot as the, as the buttock, but just, just a little bit there. Turning around and then right in through here is a nice little lighter so it's not going to come across the glute this way. We're defining part of the sacrum ending and then the glute turning. You can see it this way. There it goes. Come on, Mike. There it's it. There we go. Then maybe across a little fold here. We don't see how long. I'm going to put a little light on the scapula around here and maybe on this side of the of the uh, the, the uh, oblique and the glute glute through there and then maybe lining it up through through here okay I think we've got everything we need why don't we go on now I think we're ready to go on now to our final male front front view and tackle that one. All right, the last one. We're coming to the last one that we'll do for practice as we're practicing along together um, is the male front here. This is a really nice one in, for uh, getting a lot of the uh, an anatomical features um, and looking at. So we're going to have pectorals, rectus abdominis, we're going to have uh, ribs, serratus anterior, a little bit of the lat, and we're going to have the obliques too to look at. So this is a lot, lot to cover, and a lot really to, um, a lot of nice things to, uh, to work with. So sharpen up our pencil here. Should have done that off camera before, but uh, oh well. It'll take but a second. Got that. I think we're ready to to, to go here. So I've got the the generalized lay in here, and I can already see I want to put the center of the. Uh, where he's at here, a little pushed over here a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. A little bit further here. Some more uneven in through here. All right, we've got that center line. So we're going to figure out now where his sternum is. So it's right here, right there. The manubrium of the sternum is right there. Now we notice already that the gesture of the pose, look at that, it's already way up high. So it's going to push those, those clavicles and all this anatomy st stretched up like our first one we did. And his arm is going to, the gesture is going to go way up, way up here and then outward as well. So we've got now the sternum moving here and we can locate the end of the sternum here about the, also the width widest part of the head is the same generally here roughly you know with measurements be careful and sometimes they don't always work out but there are guides uh, to getting better uh, proportion uh, the xiphoid process would be here kind of coming down that triangular part and then we'd have certainly the the uh, sternal area in through here we can locate so we have that, there's our sternum. Now locating now our 10th rib off here, the same distance here, right? Coming, coming down, we can see it roughly would be here. And you have a lot of bumps to work with there because you've got ribs, serratus anterior, and obliques working against you. But you, so if you can feel this angle coming down, you'll be able to tell, you can kind of feel it coming over now. And working for us here and over. So we have the 10th rib down through this area, okay? And then we're going to come on the other side in through here. So we have to think through these shadows, this beautiful, beautiful shadow of the pectorals we'll get to uh, later on. <clears throat> Just indicate it for a moment so you can see it, because all that's in relative shadow. So we're coming across here, you can see this beautiful kind of line it's called a Greek line that we have here. And then uh, what we get is a little bit of the, the, um, <clears throat> the ab popping over the rib 
the seventh costal cartilage into here, kind of like that. But so we're out actually here, and then we get down to the tenth here. The rib cage is almost equal, but not quite. It's a little bit higher. Right in through here is where that tenth rib is located. In through here, we'll mark it, and then we can see where it comes around pretty good, pretty quickly here, and then over, right. And then around the around the back, we have the next one on top of it, with a little bit of the serratus anterior already. You can see how they're a different angle, and then the the uh, sixth, or so, excuse me, the ninth rib. No, that didn't sound right. Like, wait a minute, get your ribs right, man, right in there. And so this starts to create a nice little shadow pattern. For now, that we'll get to them, get more into in a moment. Let's get the shape now. So we're, we've got really here, what we're saying here with this line is, I'm going to take out the lat for now, is this line is really getting the rib cage and the serratus interior. And it really, if you look at my line, it's kind of getting where the pectoral uh, ends, where it's attaching right up, up in through here later on to the tubercle of the humerus as well and then kind of up and over so we get a little bit of that but it's really moving and it's coming around here isn't it right in through there so here's our our rib cage through all that mess i generally if you've noticed if you if you're paying attention which i hope you are right especially my students at the university um you'll notice that uh i will generally locate the sternum quite often in the front quite a bit. That gives me a lot to work with, the linea alba, the front, finding the clavicles, all that good stuff coming on, coming on down. So that, that really, it really helps, true. Generally we're at width of the head, right, from the top of the nose. He's bent down so that's a little bit, he's pushed down a little bit right in through here's the top of the nose and through here a little bit narrower head, but not bad. So his perspective is a little bit going to be put, this distance is going to be pushed. That's why you have to be careful. This distance, one, roughly to two, here, another one for the top of the crests. Yeah, I'm pretty close to where I want to be in terms of my, my uh, proportion in through here. So it's pretty good right through there. And then we're going to start to feel the obliques. Now he's coming down, the skin's crashing against that. I'm just going to gesture this in and we'll really hit those. Hit those muscles in a moment. He's coming in even further in through here, and we start to see that oblique crash up against the crest, right, right through there, and a little bit thinner, longer. And those those obliques in the rectus abdominis will come all the way to the tubercle, which pulls this this around. Now you notice his hip line is being pushed in that direction. That's a nice, nice posing move to get those hips um, all in, the, uh, in a different direction. Of course, we have the angle of the shoulders right here to here too. It's well working nicely for us. All right, so let's come back now to work on our anatomy. So we have the clavicle. Now it's a little hidden back here in all that dark. So what's happening is it's curving here, attaching onto that manubrium and it's going to come around, okay, come around here, head out and curve. He's really up high. And then it starts to show up back now. It gets foreshortened and it starts to show back up and out through here, doesn't it? So the gesture of all that's here, okay? So right about to there, downwards, there's his cheek, chin. <clears throat> Get that eye line in through here, side plane. Put all that in shadow for a moment. <clears throat> right in through there, as it really, really curves around in through, and that's gonna that's gonna attach up to the acromion process. Right where you see the deltoid here emerge up higher, we can see the end of that acromion process. So the trapezius, we really don't see it would at least, I'm going to show a little bit of it anyway, about right in through here along that outer lateral part of the clavicle. And then we get into the deltoid here, okay, 
up and over. You get that in through here. So <clears throat> let's get the uh, other clavicle on through here. Now it's really coming up. So we're going to come up, stretch even further and higher, and it's going to be up about through all that mess, about right in through here. I can kind of already mark it and see it. So it's going to get elongated. And then this one's foreshortened a lot right in through here. So it's even kind of larger and wider. Let's get that curve in through there. So we're going to attach roughly here. It's almost underneath his chin almost. He's pretty touching against it. Curving up and through and over and ending about right here. <clears throat> and then, of course, the um, once we get the rest of this coming through, we're going to get the chromium process next to it. And uh, we get the um, a little bit more of the pectoral that's attaching up here that's going to crash. So we don't really see much of the uh, trapezius as we would if it came down. We get a little bit, maybe a little bit of the neck poking through out here a little bit. So cheekbones kind of across here, like so. We get a little bit maybe the bottom of the ear, right in through here. Interesting kind of ears, very separated from the head. Further in a little bit more shadow. Now just kind of mask that in. So, I think we're clear now from our reading. We can go through here. So now we're going to work now with the, the pectoral. And maybe it's instructive to put the humerus, the uh, tubercle, the humerus running through here. The carotid process would be roughly in through here, coming underneath, right in through there. A little bit of the acromion process is going to get covered up later on. All this will be. And then the glenoid cavity will be here, so we can get our roughly located where our tubercle and our joint is for our humerus here. Now it's going to overlap because it's in front here. And it's going to come up, isn't it? It's going to start to come up this way through here. About right through. Right through here and up. There we go. Not to there, probably tilted this way. There we go. Okay. Probably don't see that in camera, that's just fine. All right, so now we understand a little bit. We've got more working for us. <clears throat> now we can get, with all this information, we can start our pectoral. So we know that the pectoral now, we can slide across this rib cage. Right, so we're at one to six. I'm kind of just sort of scissoring the, the movement of the rib cage where it attaches and getting that shadow in through here. So we're down a little bit lower, right in through here, okay? And also the rectus abdominis, this little bulging, you see this little bulge right in through here? That's one of the top abdominal muscles of the rectus abdominis. So let's be a little bit more diagrammatic now in coming through here. <clears throat> I'm going to move his chin, his chin over. <clears throat> I should have gotten all these features more squared away. That's okay. There we go. <clears throat> Just keep him like that for now. <clears throat> So what's interesting about this shadow, it's coming across the rib cage and then making a nice cast shadow on the other side of that rib cage. So now we can make some attachments here, the sternum one through six, all the way to the to the clavicle, to the uh, the uh, medial head here, about one third out, but then it's coming up and overlapping. So we're gonna come up in through here, a little bit more overlapped, right? And then we're going to come up right in that tubercle 
it come on up and you can see it just nicely beautiful slink up and it's going to attach on the other side in this view here then we're going to come this is very much getting like a tube over here isn't it and it comes down here whoops broken pencil so you see how this is a cylinder coming down a little bit of a, of a, a trending getting into sl almost almost tenderness but not quite and as it wants to come down there it's really getting stressed isn't it we have that second part of the stretch in through here and down and now be careful because it's getting very very light there so you want to read this nicely right in through here this is stretching up we get that already up but also over do you see that how it's stretching over here like so and of course it gets into this shadow which I don't well we'll get but I didn't want to cover up entirely what we're doing in through here but we get that muscle coming on down right now we're at six we can't go any lower than six the attachment so that means we're right in through here stretched right right in through here and we start to see the rib a little bit and that's, that's why it's nice this figure is really nice to show us more anatomy generally more fit um, models with less subcutaneous fat are going to be not that other models aren't great but for, for these purposes it really helps uh, and that's just that's just a fact of life in there so we have that through here then around and of course all this gets pushed back in shadow right in through there <clears throat> and so we can this kind of comes down in this view and then from this of course we have the nipple here about 45 degrees right coming out there's your nipple line right there but right there a little bit longer and stretch see that right in through there so what happens over here we have a rib here and muscle fiber and then we have this little straight line here okay cast shadow coming down can you see that that's a cast shadow and then we have the rect part of the rectus abdominis running through here and it's all it's so bulgy that it creates a little bulgy patterning to make that more clear you see it right in here and then down back into that groove of the linea alba that's that's also in it's it's a white line uh, by name and also by look and also because it creates a white line look right through there as you can see in this case it's hollowed out because it's in shadow or it's in a, in a rut because it's in shadow so it can be a little bit of both so we have that pectoral okay now what we have over here we can do a lot of nice things what we're getting over here is from underneath part of the scapula is this little area right here is the lat now pulling over and it's going to wrap here okay up getting a feeling of just slightly the bottom of of the um, the scapula and through here one of our hardest working bones he's hard working and we get this wrap and turn wrap and turn of the lat and i'll just finish out the the outline here the contouring part and through here and then we get into which i don't want to get too deep into which is the deltoid and we get the deltoid and then we'll get the bicep actually too as well because the bicep will attach to actually the humerus and the ulna and the radius here we go okay so we have that so this part right in through here right in through the all this muscle it, it, what it is through here is, is the is the lat so we have have it through here then we get this armpit look so the pit of the arm we get a little bit more underneath here muscle and we start to open up now for the ribs and the serratus interior hallelujah one of my favorite favorite muscles to work with all right so let's slow this process down and take a look here <clears throat> i'm going to clean up this nose a little bit that doesn't look good let's get that cleaned out
Got to be on camera, right? Got to look a little decent. Let's see here. Just get the bottom of that nose roughly. There we go. All right, so <clears throat> now what's happening here as we come around, these little bumps, remember those, those missiles that we talked about, the serratus interior here, okay, those fingers, right? Here's a finger. So here, right? Can you see it in the camera? Yeah, here. And they attach to the rib, really, they're coming around. Right, they attach to the rib, etc. So they do a nice job of doing it. It's kind of like a Nike symbol, too. <clears throat> this wants to turn, come around that way further. <clears throat> so we have that, and then we remember that line now, that curved line across that rib cage here. So we have. Uh, the indention of the serratus interior. Then we have another one right underneath here with the serratus interior here. Okay. <clears throat> and over. And what's happening is we come down, we get a little bit further. This could be a little bit longer. We come down, we get a little bit further. Here, this get, tends to get shaded. And you see with this rectus abdominis right in through here, and this is a little bit of indention of a part of a rib right in through here. This could go darker for now. Right in through here is a rib. And then we turn, this is a rib here. Okay, this is a rib. This is serratus anterior. Okay, see how it's coming around the form underneath the lat. Okay, it's underneath, it's connected to the scapula. The lats are on top of that. They come over and attach down to the, <clears throat> on top of the serratus interior, laying on top of it. Okay. So we have that. <clears throat> then we have, again, we'll get the, uh, the underlying shadow of it through here. Okay, like so. And then we have one more peeking through. That's probably the last one at nine. Remember, we're at one to nine on those. Right in through here, you can see that as it attaches, and then you can see how it connects up with this rib, about right in through, right in through there quite nicely. We can get this just kind of shaded down a little bit. Okay, coming through. Might even put a little you now black to emphasize these, get a little bit of the outside edge here. Just a little bit where that's coming down. <clears throat> Here, through. This will be a little long, bleak. <clears throat> we'll come around a little bit. So let's get on now the other side. <clears throat> and see what we've got, and we'll work our way down, down the model. So on the other side, we get <clears throat> where the clavicle is, in through here, we get the acromion process right on top of it, coming from the back of the scapula, on over and through here, okay? That would be like this, carotid process here. Glenoid cavity would be here, meaning that the ball socket joint would roughly be here. Make sure we're in camera, we'll get enough of that to see. That would be here, roughly. Okay, and then we're gonna come up the gesture of that ball socket joint. The tubercle, the tube part of the humerus, and through here, like so, I think. Just about out of camera, yeah, out of camera now. Okay, so we have that. And so now we can start to take a look at what he's got through here <clears throat> in terms of pectoral. So now we're on the other side of the, the sternum here. Okay, over here, one through six, attaching on the medial part of the clavicle meaning the more centered part of the clavicle, about to here. 
Then it lets go, but it's stretching because it's lifted up. It's going to continue looking like it wants to pull here, but it's going to pull up and over. And then it's going to get into a little deltoid too as well. So we're coming up here, and then we're going to get deltoid coming up over this way, like so. I'll attach right in through there and up and over like so. And of course, we get bicep, but the the uh, the pectoral will come now attach over here and come around. You can see where it's coming around now here. It's a little hard to see. Really look at that photo. Down and through here, right? So let's get this rib, rib cage, excuse me, a little bit more back to where it was, right in through there. <clears throat> so we have that. Now it's stretching up, so we're at about six. Here's seven, six and through here, and then immediately it wants to stretch, doesn't it? So it's attaching to the sternothoracic area here, and then really starting to stretch already up, isn't it? In through here, and then over, right? Top in through here, okay? Like so, being pushed. And you can start to use your contour line sensibilities to push that over, stretch that over even further because this one goes over right and we're getting some underneath stretching which we won't see to that tubercle here you can start to make this now a little clear to here maneuvering here so the separation underneath his chin is important right in through right in through here Really all, just about all that's in shadow. We have a little sternocleidomastoid attaching. Right in through there. Okay, so we're coming down and over, and then we get into cast shadow through here. All that will be ultimately in shadow. I think I'm going to leave it out of shadow just to be clear, but I'll put this part still in shadow <clears throat> of where we're at on the sternum here. So this is core shadow here as it stretches, pulls across. And this is where it turns quite a bit. Running through here and bulges around. <clears throat> Rectus abdominis. Through here. <clears throat> And then this gets a little deeper in through here. We get into form shadow, but then where the where the striations are, where there's some there's some tendinal connection between those pectorals and the stern, thoracic sterno area, we get a little bit of these little darker areas in through here. Of course, this shape starts to reflect now this undercurrent of the the rectus abdominis in through here. So we get that. <clears throat> and now as we're stretching across we get this underturn here now this is the end of the pectoral right here I'll make it mark it in through here let's also find the nipple it's barely visible right so the nipple will also be see this tilt again that will be the same tilt the shoulders with the, the pectoral so at 45, see how logical you can think of it? See how it's right on the edge of the pectoral, just kind of a line right there to indicate where that is right in through there. It's important to see that. Just keep cleaning up my drawing. It's better to have these on a table without a lean on an easel, just easier for me, so it's harder to keep the uh, some of the palm of the hand on there so you have to go back and make sure it's clean. That also separates a good professional from somebody who's learning to be or wanting to be as cleanliness when you need to be. Not all drawings have to be clean too, don't get me wrong. Right. Okay, so we have that. Now what we're getting out here right beyond that is rib cage and we're also getting now this serratus interior. So I'm going to get this contoured feeling out here of it. Okay, through here. 
So I'm not going to shade it. So you're getting a little bit of both there. Here, right, one, two, three, one, two, three, and through here, and then you get down to the, the latter part of where I'm at, down and through here with the with the rib cage. Because this would this would turn and come on and that would be costal costal cartilage, wouldn't it? Okay. Alright, so we're feeling, I think, pretty good here. We don't get much that I can tell of on this side, anything else for this part of our series. We don't have any, I don't see any lats over here. So we're getting rib cage and a little bit of the, just a touch bit, maybe right in through here of the serratus interior, but for the most part, that's about, that's about it in through there. So now as we come down the rectus abdominis, let's find and locate our pelvic region to help us in through here. So we're coming down the model here, right? And we see now a little bit lower than 10 where the navel would be. So roughly right in through, right in through here, okay? And we're coming through now with the rectus abdominis on the side, a little bit thinner than I've got it right in through there and it's going to come shoot in so it's going to attach right on that tubercle so let's make this pelvic region here and let's just feel out the pelvis the pelvis i haven't talked about at least yet now you might have seen it already if these are time delayed i might be talking to you in the future but it's like a bowl and or a box so here's kind of the box i'm going to draw really a lot here's the box if you would like so, coming down, okay, and or a bowl, if you would, like that. So you can think of it in two ways. And what, the reason why we do that, the pelvis is on a little bit of a downward tilt anyway. So all of this, out, out of the navel, the rectus abdominis has this little line, a feet or a contour that's feeling like, do you feel that? This is the center moving to there to the pubic tubercle on the inside of that. This is cartilage here, right in through here. Let me get this squared away a little bit. So this is cartilage material here, and then we have that tubercle right in through here, and everything below it is where the genital floor is. And through here we'll just indicate that material right through there, <clears throat> on through. And so then coming up, we can find on this edge, see this edge coming over? That's the edge of the crest coming up to here, and that's where that bone is roughly, where the obliques fall over. So the bone is a little bit inside like this, doing this, okay? And then the oblique is on the outside of it, coming around, and attaching actually here, but even we see at the outside, but it attaches on the inside. We've talked about that. And then it's going to make its way all the way down to the tubercle. Again, in through here in this particular view. So we're going to have the rectus abdominis here now. And you can see that, that softness from about the nipple line. In through here, we'll start to just kind of soften these up a little bit. They're, remember, five to seven, so they're above underneath the pack. That's why we get this bulge in through here, roughly, and then, because there's a tendinous attachment through here, right? Then we're going to get this soft feeling. See how this one is above now, coming in through and then moving down up to about just slightly under where the ribcage, thoracic uh, costal cartilage would be right in through, right in through here. I can pull all this back. Just a little bit of shadow. I want to hide hide that anatomy. So we're not doing an exact exact shading rendering. We we want to feel that. So feeling all this, can you see how asymmetrical it is? But here's the outer limits of it that we've talked about all the way down to the tubercle there, right? Well, let's go find the other side. So from five to seven at the nipple line is the outer edge coming on in. Notice how it hits really deeply there, a little bit on the outside. Do you see that right there? That's the outer edge of 
the boxier part of the rectus abdominis as the aponeuroses, the abdominal aponeuroses attaches to the oblique and sheaves all that, weaves all that, sews all that together. That's a lot of doing all that, isn't it? Wow, I sound like a preacher, but you get the idea. Running through here, around. And you can see this is this is shadow now. Turning underneath. This is all turning. Turning, and then you get a little bit of the cast shadow of that popping down his his, rec, his abdominal wall in through here. We've got to take this slow to show it to you. I know it's long, but it's important to see that. You can always fast forward it. So, there. So that, that helps you hopefully to see that. So what's happening is this is all coming down, this oblique muscle here. Remember this is getting all coming, coming down until we get to the major head of it. Right, roughly here, okay. <clears throat> and these obliques here, and then we get this wonderful, let's follow the shadow first. See here, and downward to the rut of that, where the, where the linea alba is becomes the linea noir, I suppose, or dark line. To use a little bit of bad French, I suppose, right into here, okay. Remember navel here, it's so running through where the navel is. So we've got one, two. We need to have those three in there before. So see how boxy this is? This is a good example of the diagrams we looked at. Running right through here. More of a cast shadow hard edge on this side coming down. And then look how triangular this one is. Here. So you just got to follow what you see and then you're combining also that with what what you know so we've got this this movement here coming around coming around and it kind of just attaches the aponeuroses here they all are tendinous they attach where there's space in between right in there so we have that and this wants to then bulge out here in kind of tube and belly and I watch this see how it bowls it makes kind of a little longer bowl because we're looking at the shadow too as well and then you see the split right through there do you see that that's kind of where the top split and then it just all of it starts to crash down below to the the tubercle there this kind of comes around these are the last those two longer ones in through there this is kind of an egg form right here Okay, and then downward, here's the, you can really see it on him, where the end of the abdominal region, rectus abdominal, here, do you see it here? And then you see it coming down and through, so he's, he has no subcutaneous fat. I'm jealous. I've got, I've got enough. I don't have too much, I suppose, but I've got more than I want, so. Looks like I'll be, be hitting a better workout trail soon. This comes in and around through here. Of course, his leg, this bone, really pops out right through here. This gives it the, the pointiness we need, and then we have that, that line there. So to continue on around here, this is kind of moving out like, like this here, around, 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 and over. So there's the navel, and then this has a mark like that. Okay. Through, through here. <clears throat> and we get all the shape back. Like so. There we go. And then coming on the other side now we get the strong linea alba of the noir line now because it's dark just because it's a rutted shadow this moves over like so 
coming over and then we get this strong underturn of a box. You see that? Right in through there. This is triangular, this is more box-like. Right in through here. This she's over now, down below. He wants to soften up a little bit through there. <clears throat> and turn in, and we have this last under turn through here. We have that. <clears throat> And then this, this line really becomes the division between the oblique and the rectus abdominis at the end. Right in through here. There we go. This is the top. These two boxes are meeting here, like so. Turned in and the navel. I think I'll raise that navel up a little. A little bit. Don't be afraid to change it. We need to right in through here and then you get now this side part where the form shadow is and it's coming all in you get that softer and just like we had with the sternum up in here we get some this edge here is more cast shadow against this right here okay it's a little harder edge like it is over in through there so let's take a little bit of our dark now and work this edge a little bit further. So these are hard edged. And then over here, this is a little softer transition through. There we go, to get that to work. So here's the, here's our outer edge, remember that? Let's pick that up just diagrammatically here and then here. I guess that tubercle, here was the outside edge on that. Then we came over, this is a little bit Form shadow and then a cast shadow under that rib cage. Right there. We have that. <clears throat> Put a little contour on this skin turner. Over. And then we'll smooth this out, coming through, coming through. Hard edge. Hard edge for our cast shadow. Here, there's our rut really strongly in there. Then it's a little bit form shadow and softer. We could contour it this way, coming across the model like so. We could see the same thing happening over here. See that? Kind of a triangular spot. And back in through here. <clears throat> Form shadow, cast shadow, and cut. Then we see now down from the navel here. A little bit of protrusion out. We'll soften this up a little bit. Through here. And we come down the tube and through here. I'll just lay some coarse shadow through there. Catch these edges to make that read a little bit better. And I think we're on our way here. This tube's out. Goes down, we can get some nice contouring. This really splits a little bit right again, right in through there. Then we see this pullback through here, this top pullover where this is the box the bottom of the box and it gets toned downward in through here and then there's the top of the next box of the rectus abdominis is right in through here. See how asymmetrical they are? You just have to think of them as boxes and then draw what you see and combine it with what you know.
about what you're learning about anatomy and that will help you solve a lot of your your drawing problems in the future and in the present so we'll come up here a little bit put this tubercle this a little bit into here and put a little shadow where this lad is let's lad some tendon in through there <clears throat> Pretty fascinating human figure, no doubt about it. So let's get this connection where they connect here on this side to the, the sternum and through here and you get that wavy sternal pattern through here, right there, and on down you kind of get an inverted manubrium sort of in through here, right through there and then then it really wants to be more defined coming down this way. Okay, I think we're almost what we need here. Let's talk about the obliques. Let's soften this up a little bit. <clears throat> I know that all that's in shadow, but I'm going to leave that. So let's talk about the obliques just a little bit further coming on over here and finish this pelvis out too on this side. So there's the iliac crest in through here. And then on this side, you can see this line of shadow here, the oblique. That's where it's stomping and crashing up against the crest. You can actually see the crest right here as it turns. See that? And then it shows you a little bit of the top through the the skin and muscle and then the edge of it. So it's a good location. There's that shadow where it is, right? Through there. And there it is. There it is right there. I kind of brought it out a little further. <clears throat> there. Make that look a little prettier, I suppose. Okay, so we have this oblique now attaching. You see this little area, this aponeurosis, where they flatten out together and there's a little gap in between. That's that aponeurosis connection through there. A little bit of a shadow coming off that bottom rib. About 10. And through there, and that, that gives us more of that oblique. I'll put some more contour on of that oblique. And through here and around. To here, underneath a little shadow. Be a little white. I think we're there. Let's try it. Where will we have some little bright light? Maybe sternocleidomastoid muscle right in through there. If I can pick out a little bit, it's going to give me a little bit. Let's see. There it goes. Just a touch. Then maybe up here in the pectoral region. through here on the external clonal mess, uh, excuse me, the uh, serratus interior will get a little movement going in some of these heads. Through here. And then around, almost at the rectus abdominis. And through here, one more rib cage. And through here, and down below. And not too much more, maybe just on his forehead, but there's not much, not much there, is there? Just a gesture to put something there. All right, I think we've got what we've needed maybe slightly in the deltoid and then maybe a little bit on the lat. I think we're, I think we're just about there. All right, so that uh, will conclude our living anatomy part of the torso. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's long, but it's really relevant and important that we practice these together. So draw these with me. The, the images for these, for these photos, for these model poses, will be at the back of the video. So you can reference them, print them out, or screen freeze them and pull up another screen and draw with me here. There's many different ways to do that. You'll, you'll figure out your best, your best way. All right, all right, you guys take care, and I'll see you, see you soon. Bye-bye.